Hello, Wet Shaving World. This is episode three of Stubble and Steel. I'm your host, John. Thanks for joining me today. I wanted to talk about some thumb wheel adjustables. Two super iconic, really famous ones, the McCurr Progress and the Parker Variant. When I first got into wet shaving, I had heard so many things about the Parker Variant being rather aggressive. So while I liked how it looked, I was kind of apprehensive to try it. And the uh, Occur Progress, I also kind of heard that it was aggressive, so I, I kind of stayed away from it. Uh, I was scared to try them because I kind of like more of a mild versus aggressive razor. And uh, long story short, I got them and uh, I really like them. I was going to return which one I didn't like and I wound up keeping both of them. The Occur Progress, my critiques of it would be, first off, you have to align, and uh, it's funny, I have it the wrong way, but you have to align the top cap notch with the bottom cap if you look if you don't know you can see right there and there on the top cap and on the bottom there are little notches that line up and the thing that i find crazy is they've supposedly been making this occur progress since 1955 and on the box there was zero instructions about lining up the top cap and that and that notch how you can not mention that especially as a german company which are known for being meticulous and great machinists and super attention to detail, how you could not mention that if you don't put the top cap on the right way, the razor will line up on the three adjustment is uh, blows my mind. The other thing I noticed, and I can't really get it here on the camera, but I'll try is up underneath here, man, you can really tell that it's Zamac. It's all just like, not super pitted, but it's not quality stuff by any means. And same with on the inside. You know, yeah, that stuff's hidden, I guess, and I shouldn't be so nitpicky where you can see up here and here is, highly shined and you know that kind of stuff but compared to the progress or compared to the variant the i'd say the machining and the quality of the build is much better um the red dot and the numbers painted on both of these uh, i did myself guys so don't think that uh, that's how they come i just wanted to throw that out there um the other thing that I would mention is it's not as easy to paint those as the videos that I saw. It was more so one of those kind of cussing contests. <laughs> Why did I bother with this again? So it's not as easy as I thought it was going to be, but uh, I've done stuff on gun work and whatnot, filling in letters, and it was much easier. So uh, on that note, um, a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. But anyways, the things that I do like more so on the variant is I like these lather channels. I noticed on the new open comb variant that they came out with, those lather channels are gone. I don't really understand why they would have done that. You know, it does have these really big fat channels here for the lather to go, so maybe they felt it was not necessary. You know, these razors are extremely similar when you compare the heads. A lot of people basically say that the variant is just a, a copy of it, but I find that they shave a little bit different. So. Let's uh, hop into it. Today what I wanted to use for the uh, blade was, you guessed it, one of my favorites, the Treat Falcon Carbon Steel Blades. I find that in the variant it works really, really well. Um, I find that the progress is a little bit more blade finicky than the uh, variant. I find the variant much more tolerant with blades. It works great with the Perma Sharp and some others that I've tried. I, I got great shaves with almost every blade I've tried in the variant I found. For the soap today, we're gonna go with Razor Rocks, Motherfucker, and for those that don't know, the reason why they have that funny name is mud is because it's got what's called Fuller's Earth. It's an Italian mud in Italy that's supposed to be amazing. People bathe in these big pools of this uh, mud because it's renowned for being super rejuvenating, make your skin feel like a million bucks. And after the shave, you say, Motherfucker, and you do. And you know what? For $10, this soap hits in a $25 artisan soap range. The lather is amazing, the post shave is amazing, it's got great slickness, it lathers up super, super easy, no complaints at all for $10 that it normally is, and sometimes on sale you can get it for even less than that, mind-blowing soap. As far as the scent notes on it, it smells to me exactly like Jean-Paul Gaultier's uh, La, La Male cologne. It's like a silhouette of a man's body and it's got like blue stripes and stuff on it. To me, that's exactly how that... Uh, smells it smells just like that cologne that uh, i used to wear all right let's get into it. we're gonna go with the face lather today for the uh, brush i'm using a uh, yachi 30 mil barber pole uh the handle on this is is uh, you know comfy if you hold it up here i wish they would have just kind of trimmed down this part uh, i was going to talk to my dad and see if we could whittle it down on the lathe or something and make it a little bit better ergos um it's got a great big knot on it man it's a lather beast Synthetic knot. 
I like synthetics, especially big ones, 26, 28, 30 mil. I find that they just are, are lather beasts for me. I, I don't have to load so long, and uh, I just kind of prefer them, simply put. Usually give it about three shakes there. Do you guys count how long you uh, load the puck? I do. I find that if I do it that way, I know how long I've been going with a larger 26 or uh, 28 and 30 mil knots. I usually do for about 11 seconds and I find that that's usually good. Kind of lost track a little bit there, but that's about 11 seconds. Let's do a little face lather here. I moved the camera a little bit, guys, and uh, put it more straight forward. So let me know what you think of this angle versus the other videos. Is one better than the other for you? So I was talking about with this soap in particular and this brush, it's just like barely working and lather for days. Cushion's already there, don't really have to add much water because I had enough left in the brush. I might add just a spritz of water here, see what happens, let's see. So what are, your, from, what are your favorite adjustables, guys? Do you have a bunch of them? I've got a couple others. I've got a Recur Progress, obviously. I've got the Fatur. I've got a Fatur clone. I've got a Gillette Vintage uh, Black Beauty 109. How about you guys? Do you have a bunch of different adjustables? I've got a T2. My buddy loves the T2, and so I tried it, and I find it's a little bit mild for me. I can't find that sweet spot with it. All right, let's get loaded up here with our blades. Yeah, where Parker in comparison definitely mentioned that you had to have those notches lined up in the instructions on the box that they give you, as they should, as they should. How a razor manufacturer could leave out the fact that you gotta line the thing up properly is just blew my mind pretty much especially since they've been making it for as long as they have. It's not like it came out two weeks ago and it was an oversight. You'd think somebody would have caught it by now. What settings do you guys like on these? I usually run with anywhere between a two to three, but I shave every day, so every day for the most part. I don't like to go too crazy aggressive. I find that my neck's pretty sensitive, so if I get too crazy with it, I pay for it. Notches lined up. I might paint in those uh, notches on this uh, progress in particular with it being all chromed out. They're pretty hard to see, especially the one on the bottom here, tiny little arrow. I do wear glasses and I'm not wearing them, so that doesn't help at all. All right, let's start with the three. Three on the variant, let's go. And those Street Falcon blades are just so nice to me. They're carbon steel. My dad's a lifelong woodworker, luthier. He's made violins, guitars. And he said that all the premium woodworking tools are all carbon steel. He said they get a much superior edge, it just doesn't hold an edge as long. But he said all your chisels and all your fine woodworking tools are always gonna be made of carbon steel, never stainless. And I had heard that carbon steel blades are superior for shaving by somebody. And so I checked it out. I got a sampler of some tree blades to try because I saw that they were one of the only ones at least that advertised that they're carbon. And I really like them. Very nice, the variant. Let's go with the progress. 
I will say with the progress, a lot of guys complain about the handle. And it's definitely super slick. I'm not gonna say otherwise. I personally don't use alum, so I can't make my fingers all sticky with it. But the saving grace is that knob, especially for the against the grain. Or when I'm shaving, I'd basically just raise, rest that knob on my pinky. So for me, I can get it done. It works fine. I got no complaints. If it didn't have that knob, I probably would have returned it because it's even worse to hold than an Edwin Jagger. Although mine's the lined Edwin Jagger DE89 and it's very easy to hold with the lined. I like it a lot actually, it's got a lot of grip. But that's why I didn't get the smooth ones that they offer. That just seemed kind of silly to me. Although sometimes smooth things like with my uh, Batur, even though it's smooth, a little more feedback, a little more audible feedback progress. It's deceptive when it makes more audible feedback. It gives the illusion sometimes that it's rougher. Are you feeling that or is it just because you're hearing that? It's hard to say. Variant seemed just a tiny bit smoother to me there, guys. Let's go for pass number two. I find the variance extremely efficient for how smooth it is for my facial hair. Another thing that I noticed was there was a review of the new open comb one, and if I'm not mistaken, it seemed like they had updated the marks on the top cap and on the bottom plate and mine seems like it was like that newer one so i question if they changed the closed comb head at all and that's why i like it so much i wonder if i got my hands on one that has the older markings on it if it's any different in a shave experience on the variant i need to go back and watch that ohio shaves video of the open comb one and look at the details there I really like retro, old throwback style vintage designs. And that's what I think turned me on to the progress to begin with. I just thought it has that cool look to it. So that's why I don't hate on that slippery handle that much because it just looks cool in the, in the stand. I have a white faux ivory handled Yachi brush. That's another 30 mil. And uh, side by side, it matches almost identically the uh, knob. And it looks really good in that side by side. They look cool together. All right, let's go to a two and a half on the against the grain on the neck here. See right there, I was complaining with the Lupo. It wants to bite me or I've got to be real careful there. Very it's much smoother right there. I don't feel like I gotta wash super careful. All right, back over to the progress side. messed up, didn't I? It's on a three. Let's crank it down to two and a half so everything's apples to apples.
Progress feels a little better on the two and a half versus the three. Obviously. Obviously, because it's not as aggressive on that setting, so. I guess I just meant compared to the two and a half on the other razor. Definitely a lot more audible feedback with the Macor. But I kind of like that. It's that cool sound, you know? That manly sound. I feel like I'm really working with something. Got more shock effect, you know? Cool sound effects. Maybe it's just in my head, I don't know. It just feels like the progress the blade's not as supported as much for some reason. And when you look at them, they look so similar. If there's a difference, it's gotta be microscopic, minute difference because I can't tell with the naked eye. They look like they're almost the same head other than those lather channels. I wonder if they just did those lather channels so they didn't get sued. <laughs> but the handle and the knurling and the grip on this is definitely superior, no, no doubt about it. If you like a longer handle, they make two different versions of the Progress. This one is the 3.5 inch, the Model 500. They also offer a Model 510 that it's a little bit longer at 3.7 inches, whereas the variant is pretty much four inches. Weight-wise, the variant's 113 grams. If you get the 510 in the Progress, it's 103, so a little bit closer. This one, the Progress, the shorter one, is 91.2 grams. So over 20 grams difference in weight between these two razors, but they both feel good. I will say that the Progress feels a little bit cheaper in the hand. It doesn't have the weight and feel and solidness that the variant does. But I definitely wish I would have tried the variant sooner and not been so scared of it. Greg Tardif really likes it. Uh, all the different adjustables he's tried, he liked the variant a lot. So maybe I should have tried it earlier. I find the most important thing when you're watching reviews on guys shaving with razors is what other razors do they like and what is their facial hair type? Is it similar to yours? How often do they shave? Those are factors you really need to consider because I don't have the thickest beard, but it's definitely a lot thicker than some other channels that I've seen. So what works for me might not work great for you guys and vice versa. All right, let's go against the grain here. You know what, I'm gonna go back up to a three. For me, this variant on a three is probably one of the most efficient for how smooth it is. Yeah, I, I you know, the Futur might be a little more efficient, but it's got more, more blade feel. At least on the lower settings, for sure. I don't know that I've even cranked this one up to four. I've never had a need to yet.
smoothie of them under the nose. Crank it back up to the three. You know, my buddy Ted's right. When I was looking at the 6C, he was like, oh, should I get the 2C? Should I get the 6C? And he's like, well, I'll tell you what, you're probably going to land on the three plate and never change the damn thing. <laughs> he was right. And sometimes with these adjustables, I laugh. I look at all these specs of what the, what the spread is on the gap. Where does it start? Where does it end as far as setting one to six or one to nine or whatever they're offering? And I get all lost in these details. And then at the end of the day, I don't even really use most of the adjustment. How about you guys? Do you really play with the adjustment all that much? Speaking of my buddy Ted, he does the opposite. Instead of going three, two, one, or something like that, uh, uh, transcending downward, he goes up with the adjustments. He'll start on a one, and then go to a two, and then finish on a three, for instance. At first, I couldn't wrap my head around that. It didn't make any, any damn sense to me, but I guess when you think about it, it's just kind of a different ideology of the progressive reduction you start off on a low setting so you get no irritation and then you finish off on the high setting to clean up anything that you missed i get it i just haven't gotten around to trying it i guess the variant seemed like it got more here i missed some here progress left a little bit more here that could have been technique because I'm playing around with this new camera angle and so I was kind of in that weird spot where I was trying to look in the mirror, trying to shave in the, in the camera. It's a little bit goofy for me. Can't mix sides now, gotta go back to the variant. That's about the only way I can get under my nose. I got a big old beak, so you know, I guess it is what it is, but uh, I can't get under there with most razors. All right, guys, well, I gotta say, uh, real, real close. I mean, uh, tiny nuance differences. Cool retro look, looks great in the razor stand. You got the cool nostalgic knob. Some love it, some hate it. If you wanna get crazy with an X-Acto knife and try to cut your fingers off, some guys make some uh, fancy new uh, 3D printed knobs on Etsy and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, just different look. I'd say overall though, I really like the look of the Parker. This is the newer one. It's not really black. It is definitely more of a graphite. I will say that. I guess they had issues with the original ones peeling. They went to a different coating. So this graphite one, it's not as dark as I was hoping. Uh, I was hoping it was gonna be more of a jet black, but it, you know, it still looks great. And uh, overall, I like the knurling better on this. And there's just something about it. It just seems a tiny bit smoother and just a tiny bit more efficient. Although, on the other hand, if you like that crunchy audio, ASMR uh, audible feedback thing, can't go wrong with the, with the progress. I guess I just feel for the, for the same $60, I think you're getting a lot more refinement and, uh, you know, it's quite obvious they, they uh, you know, did their homework and made a new and improved copy. So, you know, for the same $60-ish or so, I, I like this one. Um, you know, I can never decide if I like a short handle or a long handle. I really like these three and a half or three, seven, five, I find are great to really set it on the pinky like that. I find you do get more maneuverability versus long handle, but if I want to come and clean up my neckline or something like that, I definitely like the longer handle. And I do actually use the variant with that, uh, radio knob style set up on the end. It's definitely easier to hold on to. So at the end of the day, guys, can't go wrong with either one. I think you'd be happy with both. It just depends on what style you like. Don't forget with the progress, they do offer the three, seven, 
five or 3.7 inch handle, so you can get a little bit longer one if you like the longer handle. But uh, my pick would uh, be the Varian. I'd really like to try that new open comb one and see how aggressive it is. I ha personally haven't had greatest luck with the uh, open combs so far. I tried the Razor Rock Slock and I tried the DE5 uh, fine one, and they just seem like they kind of want to bite me at any turn. Uh, I'm not a huge open comb fan, but I definitely would like to try the Varian uh, Parker one and see what I think of that one. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. I think next up is going to be some uh, Clubman Pinot uh, aftershave, and I uh, want to do some head-to-head -head between maybe the Futur and a clone. Throw me uh, some comments in the, in the boxes below and tell me what you guys want. I got a bunch of different uh, razors I can try. Tell me what you'd like to see some reviews of. I could do a Game Changer versus Lupo. I could do Mamba versus Game Changer. I could do uh, a couple different ones. So throw me some ideas. What do you guys want to see? Take care.